There are over 20 playable characters in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and with the character recruit vouchers being something that is a little bit limited at the start of the game especially, you may want to be careful about which ones you want to unlock first. And so in today's video I'm going to be showcasing what I believe to be the top 5 best characters that you should make your priority to get them as soon as you are able to in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. And of course keep in mind that the most important thing is to have fun so if you really like a character that I haven't spoken about in this video you can go ahead and unlock him right away. So when picking these 5 characters I really wanted to make sure that I got the ones that would be able to not only dish out a lot of damage and be useful to the team but that would also provide tons of value that you could not get from any other character in the game all the while not relying on weird gimmicks so that you can simply pick them up and start using them. So with that being said let's go over the first character on the list. So the first character I have here for you is going to be Cagliostro. So with Cagliostro you can go one of two ways, you can go all out supportive skills with Reinforce being able to put down a healing field to heal your allies, you can use Rizomata to resurrect them, Mehen I believe is how you spell it, is also a very good debuff that you can place down as a trap that is going to lower the enemy's attack by 20% and Disruption can be used as a good damage dealing spell that will also remove one buff from an enemy, so having a dispel ability is very nice especially in the end game where a lot of bosses will activate buffs and make things harder for you and on top of all of that Cagliostro also has access to Phantasmagoria where she can buff the entire party by increasing their attack, defense and critical hit rate and the best thing about this is that it stacks with pretty much every single buff in the entire game so that is fantastic. So if you choose to go on the offense, Cagliostro is actually a very competent character at dealing damage. You can use the Pain Train as a gap closer and then follow up with a bunch of different skills. Like so. With Alexandria, you launch the enemy up and you are able to charge your big skill a lot faster. And Mimic Doll also allows you to charge up your Collapse attack a lot faster. So you can try something like going from a Pain Train into a Collapse, then you use the Mimic Doll and you perform another collapse. So even as an offensive character, Cagliostro has a lot of good options, which makes her all the more enticing. And then of course you can always go with a mix of the two. Personally I like having Disruption just to have a Dispel as they become very valuable in the endgame, but also having the option to set up traps to decrease the enemy's attack while dealing damage can be nice. And Mimic Doll is a nice way to get out of danger while dealing damage and allows you to charge up your collapse faster like so. So whether you are looking for a character that can go all out on support or all out offensively as a mage or perhaps a mix of the two, Cagliostro might be the perfect pick for you and it's certainly a character that will complement very well the starting supporter cast which would be the captain and Rosetta. The only thing that Cagliostro is lacking is having a skill like this that is able to cleanse your team because also later on into the game a lot of enemies will apply debuffs and getting rid of them is going to make your life a lot easier, let's just put it like that. So I do believe that Cagliostro is a very high value character in this game and I think that you all should try to get her. The next character on the list is going to be Lancelot. So Lancelot has to be one of my favorite characters to always have on the team and I think I've done a very good job of showcasing why exactly that is. It's pretty simple, it's all about dodging incoming attacks, you keep on spamming these light attacks which then lead to this infinite combo where you just mash the attack button and you deal tons of damage. As if that weren't enough, you can even add even more hit damage to each of those attacks, turning Lancelot into a huge DPS machine. And with you being able to dodge any incoming attacks with your triangle attacks that do have iframes if you dodge them at the right time, you are able to constantly be hitting the enemy and constantly deal a ton of damage. Additionally, you've got these two very powerful attacks that lead up into your main combo. So let's do this one again, does a quick combo, deals pretty decent damage and you go back into the spammy attack, pretty simple. And you've also got this one which can also be used as a dodge, does AoE damage and you go back into the square combo. Very simple stuff that works very fine and because Lancelot has these dodge utilities including this skill, even if you have Lancelot set as the AI, you will often find them actually able to dodge a lot of attacks on their own. 
so you have to worry about healing them a lot less. Also a very cool and important skill that Lancelot has is this one called Cold Swinger, where you just freeze the enemies and you keep on holding this attack. So if you are playing as Lancelot with your, as your main character, that can be a little bit annoying, but you do give room for your teammates to deal more damage. But if you have Lancelot set up as your AI, you'll actually be able to find many instances where you will do it when the big boss is about to do one of their biggest attacks that will one-shot you. So having a character on your team that is able to stop a boss from doing one of their most powerful damaging attacks is a huge plus. Now there are some more skills to Lancelot that I need to showcase here. You've also got this basic lunge that deals decent damage and leads into the square combo, as well as a few ranged attacks, nothing too special there but pretty useful stuff. On top of that you have mirror image which basically allows you to nullify any damage taken for a set number of hits. And finally, this skill allows Lancelot to redistribute his Skybound Art Gauge with all of his allies and because he attacks so fast, you'll be able to fill it up very quickly and so, by using that skill, you'll simply have access to even more full bursts. So all in all, I would say that Lancelot is certainly one of the most valuable characters that you will want to spend your tickets on right away. So my next recommendation is going to be Percival. He is a very simple character that is all about charging his big hits. As you can see, it takes quite a long time to charge, but once you do, you can unleash these very powerful attacks. However, a cool thing going for him is that you can use many of his different skills to be able to charge that up faster. So for example, we can use this lunge attack that gives you stout hearts to charge much faster and you can use this fast wide combo that can hit plenty of enemies in a wide area to again do the charging attack faster you are also able to place down this flame cone that deals a ton of damage let me tell you this thing melts bosses like it's nobody's business and you are able to freely move around charge up your next big hit avoid attacks do all sorts of things all the while that is dealing damage so that is always nice especially in the end game having low commitment attacks that deal good damage is going to be very important and percival has access to that right here Additionally, Percival has a very powerful buff that you can pull off, where if you are capped at max HP, you will simply deal 70% more damage. Let me say that again, 70% more damage on top of everything you do, which is absolutely absurd. Now granted you need to be full HP to take the most benefit from it, but even if you're not full HP you're still going to get a pretty massive attack increase, so it is a very powerful buff. Another very cool thing about Percival is that his charged attack can actually parry incoming attacks, including projectiles, I cannot show it here in the training area, but if you learn to master that timing, you will have a very powerful tool on your hands that not only deals a ton of damage, can also block incoming attacks. Now as for the rest of his skills, Axial is a white cone of effect where you inflict Petrify on enemies, lowering their action speed and decreasing their defense. Most of the characters that have a slow in this game can only apply a slow and nothing else. Percival can apply a slow and reduce the defense of enemies at the same time, which makes this skill a lot more valuable and is going to work very well even if you place Percival as one of your allies. You've also got this party-wide buff that gives you a 20% attack and defense increase, so that is going to be very good. I like to use these two skills when I have Percival as one of my AI companions. You've also got this other lunge attack, which makes your charge attacks charge up faster, but also applies burn to the enemy. And finally, you've got Royal Authority, which does this massive AoE damage explosion that does a couple of hits. So you put down the sword and you get these two big instances of damage. This is the perfect move to use in one of those horde missions where you need to clear a lot of adds. And even in boss fights because a lot of bosses will summon enemies, having a skill like this is going to be very beneficial. At the end of the day, Percival is a very simple character that is all about dealing good damage while charging up his attacks. And because of his high damage output and capacity to buff the entire team, he can be the type of character that you can slot into just about any team and he is going to be able to put in some good work and if you ever have the need of a good damage dealer, you can always pick him up and shred through boss's health. And after that, the next character on the list is going to be Fairy. 
Now as for Fairy, I do believe that she can do quite a few things very well and she may actually surprise you with the amount of damage output that she is able to dish out. So Fairy's gameplay is all about trying to, by doing this at the right time, summoning more of her pets to deal damage. But of course you've also got skills like Strafe here where you summon all three at once and deal damage and then once you have all three you can decide to simply let them be there attacking the monsters or whenever you find a big opening you can get up close and use onslaught to deal a ton of damage and a very cool thing about fairy as well is that the link attack will give you the three pets back immediately so you can keep up with your aggression now fairy can be a pretty supportive character additionally so if we put down all the pets again we can use Benediction which will buff your entire party, give you regen, attack up and defense up, I believe it's up to 25%, so getting a party wide utility buff just by using your normal kits to increase your damage is quite nice. She can also act as a CC mage by sending out some of her pets to apply defense down and you can use her kind of like a long distance character fighting from this distance but then you get up close whenever you want to do the onslaught. And if you want to increase your damage output, you've got skills like Henriquetan right here, which will increase her damage by 70%, make her invulnerable, and so you can get up close to a monster and do that right away. And with the increased crit rate as well, you'll simply be able to dash out tons of damage, especially if you decide to make her a crit monster with lots of crit rate and crit damage. She can also use Purge Spirits to place down even more spirits with a big hit that deals lots of damage and allows her to get all three pets at once. She's able to generate a slow sphere that inflicts slow on enemies, though personally I don't like this very much, but it can still provide some utility. Additionally, you can use Pendle as a quick get out of jail free card so if you find yourself in a dangerous situation simply do this and you also place two pets so then you just do this and you have one more now if you want to further increase your damage output or if you want to find more openings where you can use your onslaught to deal damage you can use the skill umlov not quite sure how you spell that where now you gain stout heart and you've also got this glowing ball around you that can deal damage and so you can combine that with Heinrichten where you become invisible and deal more damage and have increased crit rate and you deal tons of damage this way although of course the downside is that you are a rather squishy character that is made to be played at range and like a summoner type character but if you want to you can be this crit monster that goes in up close and deals insane amounts of damage with these two buffs so let's do that again as you can see this is just insane damage output so similarly to Cagliostro, Fairy can be a very good damage dealer while still providing you with some utility and support. I like to think of her as a secondary DPS that can give you some nice buffs in the form of this attack and defense buff as well as regen, apply defense down to enemies and if you are going to be maining her you can simply be a damage machine. So because Fairy can fill so many roles in a party all the while dealing consistent damage the entire time I do believe that she is a very valuable character that is going to benefit your roster and so I incentivize every single one of you to go ahead and unlock her pretty early on. And the final character that I'm going to be showcasing here is none other than Vayne. So Vayne is also another character that I would say is definitely among the highest priority to get unlocked very early on. Because if you ever find yourself in a quest where you need someone to help out and get you out of a rough situation, this is the character that is going to allow you to clear that quest. So Vayne is pretty much the big tank of the team, but he's not all about just tanking, he's actually got quite a lot more going on that allows him to be very offensive and again he'll be able to carry you through difficult content a lot more easily than many other characters in the game. So you basically just do these basic attacks and at the very end you start doing the triangle attacks for combo finishers and that's how you build up his meter. A very cool thing about him is that all the attacks you do with your triangle button are armored, so if a monster is attacking you the game will take it as you blocking the attacks while doing this and once that meter is filled up all the way you can unleash these devastating combos which deal lots of damage and again you'll be blocking the entire time and as you can see you also heal quite a lot by doing this 
So not only can you have a very offensive character that deals good damage and can heal himself, he can also take less damage while doing so. And at the very end, I was able to receive a Stout Heart buff, which makes my attacks uninterruptible. So that's another thing that Vayne has going on for him. But then we get into his skills. For starters, we have this Heroic Beat, which is this Leap, which basically does one smack and you heal for a portion of the damage you deal. Nothing special, just a nice gap closer that allows him to heal. But Vayne has a particular skill called Soul Eruption that you can only use when you are below 30%. And if you use it, you gain a 50% attack buff and defense buff, you get healed back up to full and you are cleansed of any ailments as well. So if you needed any more healing on his kit, if you ever get hit by a very big attack and you need to heal very very quickly, you can do so while still buffing your damage, which is fantastic. On top of that, Vayne also has this button, the Draken Schultz, I believe is how you spell it, which will increase his attack and defense and at the same time also grant him guts. So as you can see, you can get guts which allows you to survive lethal damage with 1 HP left, basically like Moxie works in Monster Hunter, and you also get a 30% attack buff and a 30% defense buff. Very solid and especially in extreme and maniac difficulties this is going to be very useful. You've also got breakthrough which is a different way for you to buff yourself, increasing Vayne's damage by 30% and making enemies more likely to attack you, so you can play the role of a tank even better. On top of that you've also got Rampart which is basically the Paladin's Limit Burst from Final Fantasy XIV where you put down a massive shield and any person standing within this area will be invisible throughout its duration. So if the boss is about to unleash one of the most powerful attacks you can simply do that and have the entire team stand under it. I believe that this is going to be pretty much a necessity going into the endgame raids that we're going to be seeing being added to the game. Especially in the Maniac difficulty, this is a game changer without a doubt. But then you've also got his 3 offensive attacks, so let's go ahead and equip those. Rift Divider very simply is a big AoE cleave that hits a lot of enemies and also pulls them towards Vayne. And a lot of times even in boss fights the bosses will end up summoning adds that you need to kill or at least should because they make the fight a lot harder. So having a skill that also pulls them to you and allows you to deal damage is just fantastic. And yeah the AI does run to the shield whenever you place it down. I did try it once. You've also got this Arm of Destruction, which is a little bit of a projectile, like a short to medium distance explosion near you that does very high stun damage, so you can actually interrupt a lot of monster attacks by doing this, including bosses as well, so that is very cool. And lastly, we have this Energy Destruction, this massive attack that does more damage the more SVA gauge you have. Personally, I don't like using it a lot because it is very much dependent on how much SBA gauge you do have. But let's go here and set the SBA gauge to 100% and we go ahead and use energy destruction. That deals 84,000 damage, which is insane, we don't even have a damage buff on top. And I'm curious, let me try this with the damage buff where you can only have 1% HP. So let's use Soul Eruption and then energy destruction 93,000 damage beautiful so as you can see vein is absolutely busted definitely one of the stronger characters in the entire game he may not be the best in terms of damage dealing but he allows you to do things that many others wish they could a lot of times especially towards the harder missions you'll have to many times avoid monsters get out of the way from boss attacks and you end up losing uptime on your dps but with Vayne, you can simply keep on dealing damage as you'll be powering through everything healing back up to full blocking his attacks and filling up his gauge to then unleash crazy amounts of damage. Again, this is a tank character dealing 50k with his finisher. And because Vayne gives you so much potential to heal yourself, it may even open some doors in your team composition, letting you get rid of any healers and opening a space for a damage dealer character. And another big plus is that you can equip the life on the line sigils, which will increase your attack going up to 50% at level 30, with the only drawback being that you cannot be healed by any of your allies. But when you have this much healing on your kit, you don't even need that, so you simply get a 50% damage increase by simply existing, which is why I think Vayne is such an amazing character.
And these were my 5 big recommendations for characters that you should try to unlock as soon as possible. Let me know if there is a character that you would recommend instead of any of these. And if you are enjoying my Granblue Fantasy Brilliant videos and you find them helpful, then please subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, my name is Dark Hero, thank you all so much for watching and as always, happy hunting.